Okay, looks like we are live. I'm a couple minutes early because I wanted to make sure it was up and running. Because <laughs> that's all good. And as people come on, I know you'll have questions. And I wanted to do this live because I've been having so many conversations uh, really very recently with clients and prospects about this very topic. Um, and it's so, so important. And I've done this for years. I've been doing these sort of little ad hoc, you know, SEO consultations with clients where I'm kind of really explaining um, what this is all about. So this is like, it's a little bit um, coming out of that. Hi, Pip. Mexico is awesome. <laughs> um, so today's topic is SEO terms that every blogger needs to know. And, I, and there's a lot that we can go in into SEO. We're going to keep it simple as simple as possible. Um, there's a lot that you can do with this. If you are not familiar with SEOs, maybe a little bit over your head, um, but that's okay because it's totally learnable. Um, SEO, of course, stands for Search Engine Optimization. And if you're blogging for your business, which I know a lot of you are, uh, if you're blogging for your business, then you really want to understand this because it really impacts how your website shows up. Um, on Google and other search engines, right? Because the whole concept of SEO is how you are found, like whether or not you are found by your potential prospects. So there are ways that you can help it along. Now, SEO is this great big, huge topic. There are like lots and lots and lots of different um, points you, you kind of get for doing different things on your website. And it's a foundational part of your website, right? And um, it's a very important part of it. But when it comes to writing your blog post, there are things you can do and in a strategic manner that's going to help your blogs get found more often. So I know as people are coming on, please say hello so I know you're here. Um, it's always fun to know who's here with us today. And, uh, and I have notes, so I'm going to be looking off here because I just wanted to write some things out. Um, so let's just dive into this. You know, seven. SEO terms that everyone who blogs needs to know. And they're not complicated at all uh, once you really kind of inherently, you know, you st once you spend time with it, right? And I've been doing this like 15 years, so just let me know if you have questions. <laughs> I actually used all of these techniques to get one website that I had, um, 90,000 views a month, strictly through the content I wrote. And I still blog for clients, I still blog, I blog for agencies, and these are the same techniques. They still work. And it's really powerful. And I was looking at HubSpot, if you know HubSpot, the marketing agency, they had a, uh, they have, uh, they're always, every year they do a, a s series of statistics, statistics, hard word to say. And they said, you know, 90, um, I think it was 72% of marketers say that you know, they really see a difference when they use SEO in their blogging. It really impacts, um, it really impacts their blogging ability uh, to actually get found and get seen and bring in more traffic and bring in more, more potential clients. So this is important stuff. And you can learn how to do this too. It's kind of like cooking. So if you were cooking, uh, you have to get, uh, you have to know what you're going to cook, right? You want to get your ingredients prepared. You need to have the right kinds of pots and spatulas and whatever else. Um, and you need to know what you're going to cook. Whether you're kind of an ad hoc cook or whether you follow a specific recipe, you have to have an idea of it or else it's not going to come out in a great way. So blogging, um, you can apply some of these techniques to blogging and you're going to get more impact over the long haul. So plus, if you speak with an SEO company, if you ever want to hire an SEO company, you're going to be well educated. Right, and that is so important because a lot of times people think this is all like smoke and mirrors and it's all confusing, and it does not have to be that confusing. Um, so, quick overview, and you might want to get a paper and pen and write some of this stuff down because if it's new to you, you're going to want to have it be able to refer to it later. So, seven SEO terms that everyone who blogs really needs to know, and it starts with. Are you ready? It starts with your keywords. That is such an important element of this, and the whole thing stems on it. Stems from this. Uh, 
the key words are essential. If you do not understand what they are, if you don't know how to find them, if you don't know how to evaluate them, and if you do not know how to put them into your blog posts, then you are not getting the biggest benefit out of blogging from an SEO standpoint. Okay, so keywords are essential. And here's what the, most people do with keywords. Like they're totally off base with them usually. Uh, when I start working with people, I find all the time they have some big giant term that they think that they're gonna you know, be able to show up number one, two or three or four on Google for, um, such as dogs if you're a dog walker. That is too big of a keyword. You're never going to rank for that. That's like, you know, um, you, you know you're going to be trying to compete against Amazon, um, pet companies, Petco, things like, companies like that. It's not going to work. Um, a few years ago, I worked with a company that was selling like a type of a, a bag, like a purse and tote bags. And they were, they were actually buying advertising using the word bags, which is another example, right? Because think of how many types of bags there are. There are um, trash bags, there are plastic grocery bags, there are you know, reusable grocery bags, they're like bags of all kinds, right? And we kind of use that in a general term, your suitcase could be a bag, whatever. But they had to get more specific, so you know, a quilted bag or a purse, a quilted purse, um, or even you know, maybe a brand name, I mean, that's, that starts to get, you know, narrows it much, much down, narrows it down in a different way. And you're always looking at what is your potential um, buyer looking for. You know, what is, do they already know who you are? Or are you trying to reach a whole new audience who has no idea who you are? Because that is going to impact what you're writing about as well. So, keywords, keywords. There are ways you can find these things. There are tools. For years, I used a subscription based software program called Word Tracker. Word Tracker. I haven't used that in a little while. Um, because I haven't really needed it. Uh, but there are lots of different tools out there and some of them come bundled with other SEO tools and you know they run 80, 90, $100 a month. So it's probably not really worth it for you unless you're doing this as your business. However, a keyword planner, Google's keyword planner is a free tool that does give you information and, uh, and, it, and it, it, if you actually can go into it and type in some different terms and find them and, and be able to evaluate them, it's a really good place to go to look at that. Um, so Google's Keyword Planner, which you have to have an AdWords account for. Again, it's free. You do not need to buy AdWords or buy Google Ads. You just need to have an AdWords account so that you can go in there and use the Keyword Planner. And you can start by typing in all those keywords that you think people are searching for and then hitting a the little button um, and it's going to populate and say yeah nobody's looking for this or like three people a month are looking for this or five thousand people a month are looking for this um, and it's going to give you other ideas so that way you can go ah oh, well and also going to give you an idea of like how competitive the term is because going back to my example about bags and dogs those are highly competitive terms as you can imagine if you do not want to be trying to compete with Amazon, that's not going to work in your favor. So you want to find what you know what we call um, more in the medium category terms that people are searching for, but that also are not being you know serviced by these giant enormous companies that spend thousands of dollars, uh, maybe millions of dollars a month on SEO, right? So that's not going to work for you. Um, and I'm going to be doing a much deeper dive into this next week. I'm doing an SEO workshop, um, which I'll drop the link in for a little bit later. But I'm going to be doing a two-part SEO workshop where we're going to actually make sure you are lock, logged into your Google Keyword Planner. I'm going to help you get sorted with that um, prior to the workshop. That's a, that's a requirement for coming into the workshop. And then how to go through and evaluate terms. So that um, if, if you aren't really sure about what keywords are and how to use them. Um, this is going to be really valuable for you. So that is uh, so. Once you have the keywords, what do you do with them, right? Well, I create a uh, like a um, I create a list. Sometimes I just do it on a Word document, or sometimes I do it on a spreadsheet. And I'm not really a spreadsheet kind of girl, so you know. But it's, it's a useful place to put it up. Okay, there you go. Rick put up the uh, link for this, the SEO workshop. Um, so you can 
track them however you like. But like I work with clients that I have this giant spreadsheet for a ginormous, you'd be amazed, it's all color coded and all this stuff. And it has like these are the SEO terms in priority for what I'm to write on. And this is some of the um, these are some of the pages that are blog that are already ranking well in Google that I can look at and see what they've uh, what they've talked about and what how I you know draw some material from that if necessary and then I proceed to write the post. And there's a structure to this. Like blogging has a structure to it, like any kind of writing. And some of you who are watching this have been long time bloggers. Some of you may never have written a post. So your, I know your um, thought process around this is all, is all different, right? And that's fine. But once you've established your keyword terms, and this is not like a one time thing you do. You do this over and over and over again. Because Google looks at each of your blog posts individually. So you want to make sure that each of your individual posts are what we call optimized. Okay, so what we, you know, optimized for reading, optimized for the web, optimized for your viewer. I mean, they're different, or your reader, they're different types of optimization. But um, you really want your blog post to be interesting, um, provide good value, uh, so that people actually want to read it and are able maybe to share, they share it, because that's always awesome, right? And that's going to be powerful and that's going to impact your, uh, your rankings and help your website to grow, 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 grow. Because if you've heard that blogging is great for SEO, but you don't know what that means, this is what that means. It means blogging with a purpose, with a strategy, with knowing what your prospective client is looking for, um, providing them you know, great information. And, oh, and by the way, you can pull this other little, little tip, tip out of your back pocket by using the keyword terms and finding good ones and sorting them out and keeping a running list of them so that you don't run out of topics and then you can incorporate them within your blog post. So, all right, sip of water, that was keywords. If you haven't guessed, I'm like really obsessed with keyword terms because I see so many people, there's just like so much misinformation and misunderstanding around it. So I want people to understand what they are and then this relates to your entire website but we're going to talk about blogs specifically right now so your headline when you're writing a blog post you need a title right we also call that a headline it needs to be interesting of course it needs to get the click it needs to be enticing enough that if your reader were to see it in a line of um, search engine results so they want to click it because they care right They're like oh that's intriguing you can imagine do you know what i'm going to say now there's a formula to writing headlines. In fact, there are swipe files, like, like a million, um, probably a hundred. Swipe files are a writer term for um, basically cheat sheets of these things, right? Uh, where you can just look at them and go, oh, adapt what your, your post to one of these um, topics. Popular ones you know, um, list posts like three ways to, five ways to, 11 ways to, whatever. Um, how to post, how to write an SEO, you know, how to SEO your blog post like a pro. That's a headline formula. Um, if then, if you want to learn how to SEO your blog post like a pro, then you should come to the workshop next week. I mean, it's a simple, it's a formula, and there are lots and lots and lots of those uh, that you can, you can um, in, in adapt, you know, to your, to your keyword terms. You want to use the keyword term within the headline. That's really specific and that's really important because um, you, know, it's, it's, you want to be using that specific term throughout the blog post at different, at different points, which I'm gonna go through here. Uh, but within the headline, essential. That's a really key piece of your SEO for your particular blog post. So you can see that you have like a list of say 10 keyword terms or phrases because they're usually like two terms or maybe even three to, or four words, right, as a, as a phrase. Um, and so one is one blog post, one is the second blog post, one is the third blog post. So you aren't trying to push them all into one blog post. You're, you're, you're writing one blog post about whatever, you're writing a second blog post about this topic, you're writing a third blog post about that topic, and that's how you um, are able to get your, your blog post to rise on Google. So after you've written your headline, what next? Well, there's something, um, I'm not sure how many of you use WordPress. If you want to say yes, that would, you know, um, you can do that here in the comments. You probably, a lot of you use WordPress. Uh, and then, but this is true for pretty much any content management system. 
There is uh, something called a permalink, and they may even call it something different in a different system, but within WordPress they call it permalink. And that's your URL structure. So your URL, um, yeah, Susan says yes. Is everyone else using WordPress? Um, your permalink is your URL structure. Your, your, your URL is you know, your thing that your blog is called at the top of the page, right? It's your website and your blog. So www.com, jenphillipsaprilcom forward slash name of my blog post. And so every blog post has a different URL, right? So if you, you were able to edit that, so if you can edit that and include your keyword term in it, oh, guess what? Ding, ding, ding. You just got a little bit more SEO juice. So that's a good thing to do. So now we're on to number, we're, now we're hitting numbers four and five. So, so far we've talked about keywords, you're using them in your headline, your title, using them in your permalink, and now getting into your quote unquote metadata. Does everyone know what metadata is? It's like a crazy term, right? It sounds really bizarre and you're like, I know people always go like, what, meta what? Um, so lots of times it's broken into your meta title has a great face. <laughs> Meta title and meta description. It's really not that complicated. And this dates back to like the old days of code. Um, some of you may remember what the internet looked like like 20 years ago. And I am not a coder, believe me. Uh, but, you know, it was pretty much all just like weird symbols and you, you know, it wasn't like it is today, right? Um, so metadata is a meta title, the meta description. This goes into the sort of the back end of your website. It's what shows up on the search engine results page. So if you fill this all out correctly, you have your intriguing title. If someone is Googling your, you know, something about your business and you've, you've done this all, all properly, then your post is gonna show up with your intriguing title. Below that is going to be that next um, level of information. That little description that's written in there, that's your meta description. If you, a lot of people will leave this blank and it'll say something weird like this page cannot, the robots.txt file is not available or something, you know, to that effect. That's not helping you with your SEO. And if you're using WordPress, then you have a plugin or you should have a plugin. Um, there are a lot of SEO plugins. There's a, uh, Yoast is a very popular one, All-in-One SEO, Theme SEO. There's a bunch of different ones. But they all have a field for you to write this description in. Okay, and so when you write that description, it needs to be short, um, not too short. Your meta title needs to be, I usually just use the same, um, for my SEO plugin, I usually just use the same title as the uh, blog post itself. And then I write a separate description. Has to include the keyword term, again, same exact way. Don't mix it up, don't um, put other words in between it. If you're writing on, um, you know, Di dog diabetes is the focus keyword term, then you're not gonna say, oh, diabetes in dogs. You could say that, but you also need to include dog diabetes exactly that way within the description. So it's very specific. Um, Google is really smart, search engines are smart, um, but however, they still recognize like the identical phrase as the important part. So make sure you're using the same term throughout, through your headline, your permalink, um, and within your meta title and description. Again, we're gonna go a lot more detail this in next week's workshop, uh, where we're actually, I'm gonna you know, have slides and show you, do screen sharing with you and show you one of these keyword plugins so you can go through it. Um, you know, we can go through it together. Yeah, don't be clever. Don't, don't try to reinvent it. It's, it, it's a, proven, a proven system. Um, so who knows what alt tags are? Anyone? Anyone knows what alt tags are, A-L-T, like alternative? Um, so the internet is basically made up of code, of a bunch of code, right, with uh, tags. Different things indicate, um, ha have a different importance. You don't have to be a coder to understand this, but you do have to know that um, the alt tag is what they refer to as graphics. I'm not really sure where, why it became known as that. It's been like that for decades. Um, but anyway, when you're, so when you add an image in to your blog post, you're able, you also get a series of boxes, right? Have you done this? Say yes if you have. <laughs> have you done this? You get a series of boxes. And one of those boxes is a description, a place for you to write a description. Another one is a caption. Um, you, can, you can write a caption um, underneath your photo or your image. 
and you can, and then there's an alt tag. So in your alt tag, you want to also include the keyword phrase, right? And in your description, write up a little description using the keyword um, term. Yeah, yes, yeah, Susan says she's done this and gotten the boxes. So if you add an image into your WordPress blog, blog post, you're going to get a set of boxes and you're going to be able to fill those out. And if you fill them out, then that's gonna give you like a few more little points, if you will. It um, helps your, blog, your individual posts show up in Google Images. And, uh, you know, if someone were looking at images and about whatever it is um, you wrote your post about. So this gives you a better advantage. All this is like these little teensy incremental kinds of things. And of course you want to use the um, keyword term within your blog post copy, but we're not covering that right now. So, so far we have gone over keywords, which is the crux of the entire thing, as you can see. Your headline, your title, your permalink, that URL structure understanding your meta title and descriptions, your alt tags, and um, internal linking. Do you know what internal linking is? You're welcome, Susan. Yeah, it's really important. None of this is like terribly complicated, but if you don't know to do it, then you just don't do it, and then you're missing out. So do it. It's not that hard. Um, internal linking is uh, when you link your blog post from one to another. So for example, You've written a post about um, whatever topic. I, I wrote a post about this the other day in the group. Uh, so chiropractor is using. So like if you had, if you were writing a post about neck pain from a chiropractor standpoint, you're writing another post about wrist pain, and then you interlink, you reference one another in the blog post. That's internal linking. That helps search engines to understand that these things go together because you kind of have to tell, like all of this is like little signals to the search engines that like, oh, this all goes together, this is what it's about, this is what people, you know, are interested in. So when you do the internal linking to one another, to your post, and that just helps your, it helps your reader because they're like, oh, I wonder what they had to say about wrist pain. I was on here for this neck pain thing, but let me go see about that because maybe they're related. Oh, by the way, they are. And so that is really, that, that helps your visitor, which is, you always want to be helping your visitor. And it helps, uh, but it also helps search engines. So, so SEO to blogging, SEO for blogging, is really sort of a dual purpose, right? You, you want to keep all the stuff in mind about like how the search engines work and how they function and how people find your, your material, while also, of course, keeping in mind your potential reader and what they're going to care about. So like, that's going to come into your content part of it, right? Like, what are you going to address? How are you going to approach it? Um, which is more of the writing, the writing piece of the blog post. But this is a, just a really essential, you know, a quick overview, obviously, of um, applying keyword terms to your blogging and better using your blogging for, um, for, for SEO purposes. You know, just having that, that SEO strategy behind it. It doesn't take like hours and hours or days to, to understand this. You know, a couple of hours, I mean, you know, most people are going, like, oh, got it, okay. And then you start doing it, right? Like everything else you learn by doing. So implementing it into your process is so huge. Excuse me a moment. And next week I am doing a two-part workshop on this, and, and Rick had dropped the link in to the comments here. Um, that is a, a two-part workshop. The first one's gonna be about an hour and a half. They might actually both be that way. We'll see how many questions there are and things like that. Um, but we're gonna be doing it live. It will be recorded in case you can't make it. It's going to be uh, Tuesday next week at noon Eastern time um, with the follow-up I think it's the following week, yeah, the 12th and the 19th, um, so that we can go over it, go over your blog post. In the middle, in the interim, your assignment is to write a blog post using keyword terms, which we will have found together in an initial se segment of this workshop. I do, um, well, I've done similar workshops with, uh, with uh, clients one-on-one, -on -one, and I just decided, like, let's do this as a group and help you know, help you all understand this in a much better way so that you can then bring this and apply it into your, um, into your blogging so you can really create an effective blogging strategy for your business because why else do it, right? Why else do it? If you think that would be useful, just say yes in the comments below 
is yes. Um, that would be very useful understanding this. And let me hear from you if you have any questions. Do you have questions about this blogging, um, about you know, finding keywords, applying them to your blogging? Like, tell me more about any questions you might have so I can, I can answer them. So Jamie says yes. I will. Um, the link, if you if you hit the link, it's gonna, actually going to take you straight to a PayPal account. Um, PayPal checkout. Yeah, that's what where I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, but if you have specific questions about the workshop itself, I I guess I can send you those. Yeah, it's going to be two recorded webinars, and I'm working on a worksheet. I nearly completed the worksheet, and um, as well as a checklist. There's going to be some prep work for before we even get into this. Uh, because, as I mentioned, the Google Keyword Planner, I want to make sure everybody has availability, um, the access to their Google Keyword um, or Google AdWords account. Yes, uh, Karen says, what's the cost? It's um, 147 so it's $147. Like I said, the link earlier will take you straight to that, um, straight to the checkout um, for PayPal. And if you have any specific questions about it, you know, feel free to PM me and I can get that to you. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. I've done this so many times over the years, and I don't really know why I hadn't thought to bring it into you as a group. You know, as a group until last week. I was like, oh, I think I'm going to do this. Um, so it's a, you know, I think it's a lot of fun. It's really valuable. It's it's really useful to help you understand how to apply this stuff to your blogging because. We are, you know, we all ha are busy. We don't have time to do this if it's not actually moving our business forward. And I can tell you that if you do it effectively and you start applying these principles to it, you can see the difference in just a few weeks in some cases. Not for everybody, but for some cases, especially if you're a local business and like you're bricks and mortar, and yeah, you can see, you can usually see difference within three weeks maybe. Um, if you start, you know, applying these principles, like, I mean, to your entire website because they function for the entire website as well. Um, no, Karen, that's for the entire workshop, like the whole thing. Karen's asking if it was 147 times 2. So it's 147 total. So I hope that makes sense. So 147 total is basically the, the, the second part of the workshop is a follow-up. So, you know, to answer your questions because I find that it's a lot of information to take in at one time. Uh, so, you know, I find that most people benefit from hearing it more than once. And so you'll, you know, so we'll get together next week, and I have a presentation that I prepared, and we'll go through that together. Um, if you're able to be there live, that's awesome. Uh, and then my goal is for each of you to go into your own AdWords account, and you know, I'm showing you how to get into Keyword Planner, how to find terms that people are searching for, how to evaluate those terms, because that's an important, you know, element of this, and then how to then apply that to your actual blog post. And then in the interim, you'll write a blog post using this, this system, which may be entirely new to you, which is fine. And then we will go, <laughs> we will go over um, on Thursday, oh, the following week, I'm sorry, on the following week, we'll, we'll go over them. Sure, <laughs> come on down. <laughs> we can do it right here. <laughs> That would be fun. Or maybe we'll go to the beach afterwards, right? So, any other questions? Please let me know if you have any other questions. Otherwise, I really look forward to seeing you um, next week. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know. And share this with um, people you think would be interested, too. If you know people that, you know, you, you all are, are well connected. If you know other business owners that you feel would, be, would benefit from this, please let them know about it. Because the more we have, you know, the merrier. And, and I'm really excited to like share this information with people because there's so, so many people are confused by it. And it's, it's at their you know, detriment. Um, I mean, over the years, I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people who, you know, they've worked with a web developer and, and you know, they just didn't you know the questions to ask. Because this isn't part of web development. It is, but it's not always part of web development. So um, it's important, you know, understanding the, you know, you don't have to know all the deep dive of it, but you need to understand how you apply it to like your on-page, what we call on-page SEO, which is your blog posts and your on-page content. Okay, so thanks so much. I'm around today. If you have questions, let me know. Drop them in the comments or feel free to send me a PM and I will see you soon. Bye.